Hello again, ladies and germs. It's me, Mr. Plinkett, and we're back with another review. This time, it's another creepy old horror movie that you might have heard of, but maybe you never saw it, or, you know, maybe you heard your parents talk about it. We're going to talk about the 1987 classic, Hellraiser. So this movie is a famous film. It's been parodied a whole bunch. But nowadays, even the parodies are kind of, like, old. So you, you may not have even seen, like, a parody of this. So hopefully this movie is new to a lot of you. Hopefully you never seen it till you came across my commentary and thought, ah, I'll totally not torrent this movie and get a totally not torrented copy of it. Like a very easy to get 1080p torrent that you would never download and I would never encourage you to get because it's illegal. Anyways, if you happen to own a totally legal copy of this film, that's my commentary is intended for. Kind of like all my other commentaries. So this movie, it's very low budget. It's kind of cheesy. But check it out. Special effects in this are kind of incredible. In my opinion, they rival a lot of movies that came out since, even with budgets literally 10 or 100 times the budget of this film. And it deals with some very basic themes of human flaw and sin and psychology. You know, it's basically a fall from grace kind of thing, but, you know, it's a Clive Barker film, so trigger warning, kids. Literally everything. If you're not prepared for this movie, better shut this review off right now. Because this movie has pretty much everything bad that can be bad in it. So I got these two characters with the dirtiest fingernails in the universe. This guy's in some kind of Arabic bar where you probably can't drink the water or you'll get violent diarrhea. So he's drinking absinthe. And there's a creepy monarch butterfly black symbol on the wall, and you know he buys the, this like like weird cube Rubik's cube toy from the guy, and he's like, "All right, now it's mine." And then the creepy guy goes, "It was always yours." Now he's in a cube of candles. A lot of cubes in this movie. Yeah, I know, I know. Saturn black cube. The Kabbalah, the, the Muslim cube with the meteor in it, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm not going to talk about any of that crap. This movie comes from 1987. Most of that stuff wasn't in the public consciousness like it is now thanks to schizo spreading conspiracy theories on the internet. This movie doesn't really comment on any of those things. It's about these specific characters. Keep your schizo brains in check and pay the fuck attention to what you're seeing on the screen. So this guy's playing with the creepy Arabic Rubik's Cube. And as he's doing so, his window blinds are opening up like blue skeleton ribs or something. Ah. I guess I didn't solve the Rubik's Cube, guys. Looks like he got some fish hooks thrown into him. Maybe the neighborhood kids were trying to fish near his house and they accidentally got like fish hooks like cast into him. I'm gonna assume that's what happened. And he cut to all these shots of some creepy real estate with like a cockroach and some kind of naked statue. Oh, and some chains with meat on them. That's probably nothing. This is probably just some kind of butcher's house or something. I'm sure that's all it was. Oh, that, maybe, that looked like a human ear, though, on the on the pillar. Oh, and there's a human skull. Okay, I'm guessing. I'm guessing this wasn't a butcher's house. I may I may have been wrong with that assumption, guys. I'm sorry. I may have jumped the gun on that one. And we got like some kind of goth chick walking through the house. These like goth squatters. What is this? Uh, did you, did you lose something in the human goop? Did you, did you drop your wedding ring in there? Oh, Jesus Christ, it's his face. I, 
You're trying to put it back together. You're, you're trying to solve the Rubik's Cube of his face. I, I don't know if that, I don't know if it works that way, my friend. I mean, your, your entire head seems like a Rubik's Cube of nails. I don't know if you can solve that. Oh, look how sensually he's rubbing the cube. Maybe you gotta just rub the cube gently. Maybe if the other guy had done that, then it would have been, like, solved, and he wouldn't have been, like, torn apart by fish hooks. I guess it doesn't matter, because everything we just saw disappeared. Maybe it was all an illusion. We don't know. Oh shit, someone's coming into the house, who could it be? Yes, yeah, so they're fumbling with the lock, blah, blah, blah. Oh, what a nice house. I'm sure there's nothing demonic here at all. It's the old homestead. I want to say the casting in this is done really well. These two characters have very intense facial features. They're not really handsome or ugly, they're just distinctive. You don't forget how their faces look because they look very specific. I get the sense that this guy is kind of an asshole. He's like, oh, I just wanted to sell this place, I got no sentimentality, blah blah blah. Him and his wife are like 1980s business people, like, you know, American Psycho era. And this guy's basically like, yeah, I'm not my brother's keeper, fuck him. He's probably in the drunk tank somewhere. And, you know, because this chick's like, Is, isn't this house like half of, you know, yours, half your brother's? And he's like, ah, yeah, fuck him. So again, we already got these sorts of biblical illusions going on, like A-L-L-U-S-I-O-N, illusion. You know, it's like, fuck my brother, I don't, I don't care about him. I mean, if your brother's a prick, that doesn't matter, fuck that. But in this movie's context, this guy didn't even bother to check in on him. You know, he's just making assumptions. Oh, but then this woman of his goes upstairs, and he doesn't seem to want her to do that. Why wouldn't he want her to go upstairs? And she said she smelled something kind of bad. Oh, this guy's distracted now by a bad smell. I'm guessing, you know, could have something to do with, like, the 17 plates of rotting food in the kitchen. That might be producing, like, a, a less than favorable smell but you know I, I mean it could be something else and maybe there maybe there's a sewer leak down the street but it could be the 17 plates of rotten food I, I, it's just my educated guess This guy picks up this ivory statue of people fucking, and he's like, this is definitely evidence of my brother. What, did you know he was into that particular statue? And that's kind of stupid. How would he be able to assume that? Unless he knows something we don't know. Anyways, his wife or his girlfriend, we don't quite know. She's like, uh... I'm disgusted by these squatters, but I'm going to go ahead and throw my bag right down on their dirty AIDS-ridden mattress. Now, meanwhile, this guy's getting a phone call from you know, his daughter. And he's like, why don't you stay with us in this meth-head abandoned mansion with creepy demonic statues in it? And she's like, uh, uh, no. I found a, a hotel. I, I'd rather stay there if it's all the same to you.
Uh, you know, his wife finds these creepy pictures, and, and this guy's, like, making out with a chick wearing, like, a kiss mask. Or is this guy into girls who are fans of kiss? Or was he, like, a kiss freak? I know they're called Grateful Dead fans, deadheads. Was this guy a kiss head? He was into taking creepy photos. Oh, he's doing that chick doggy style. Nice. That's really cool, bro. Again, this is long before days of Instagram or you know, OnlyFans or Discord or whatever. Back then, you just had creepy Polaroids. That was it. Those are better times. So this seemingly clean-cut business chick is, like, weirdly fascinated by these photos. And again, I think she just left her purse on the AIDS mattress. She didn't even, like, bother to pick it up. She's like, mm, yeah, let's stay here. I'm fascinated by this sickening ruin. Yeah, look out for the molding. It's not the kind of molding you're talking about. It's the moldy kind. Yeah, we get this nice couple scenes where they're trying to shove the mattress in. And this chick's like picking through the boxes. Again, this is all establishing these people and their struggle. They're just trying to move houses. We don't really know much else about them. I have this mover guy. He's like, can I have a beer? And it's like a different time. Like, it's like, oh yeah, sure. You can have a beer while you're on the job. It's 1987. Who, who the fuck cares? This guy's got a cigarette in his mouth. It's like not even lit. I don't know, maybe he's smoking weed or something. Who knows? Ooh, this is a great shot of this chick walking down some kind of industrial, like, seaside zone. I love this. And music in this is done really well, too. Sets a certain kind of eerie tone to things. Walking under these big metal structures. They have a sort of vaguely H.R. Giger look to them, like spread female legs. Very creepy. Again, if you know anything about this movie, you'll understand why I'm making those associations. And if you don't understand, you're going to in like 20 minutes. So just be patient. So walking up to this house, this chick, she's all these creepy religious icons. She's like, oh, that's some corny shit. She just walks in and... And these fucking construction workers are, like, instantly hitting on this chick. Even though it's, like, obviously this guy's daughter. Or else why would she be here? And this guy just tosses them a four-pack of buds. Jesus Christ, they didn't finish the job moving your furniture. And you're going to get them drunk before they're even done the job? And again, it was the 80s. And times were different then. There's the kitchen. We cleared out the 500 plates of rotting food so you won't puke when you immediately go in there. I love it. This guy tries to hit on, you know, the daughter. And he's like, oh, my mother's dead, you fucking asshole. Shut the fuck up. Oh, and this girl's cutting off his girlfriend from the picture, and as soon as she rips, you know, the woman out, the faucet explodes. And there's something kind of metaphorical about this. As soon as she rips the picture, we get this scene of her letting this guy into the house. And he's like, my name's Frank. Brother Frank. Is she really letting him in? Is this a scene from the past? Is this just in her own brain right now? 
And when she says, I'm sorry, it's almost like, oh, she's going to say no. But then she says, oh, of course. And it's reminded of this myth about vampires where you got to invite them in. And if you don't invite them in, they can't even break in. Oh, and then we cut back to the present. It was actually her daughter who was coming in because the faucet blew up in her face. So this wife has been cheating on her husband with her husband's brother. What a naughty girl. Now we start to wonder as viewers, is the daughter even the husband's daughter? Or is it her brother's daughter? Is that why his wife, Julia, you know, she had this, this vision when Julia came in the door. Is she guilty because it was actually her husband's brother who impregnated her? Wouldn't that be a twist? Imagine sitting on that guilt for decades. And then you have to come back and move into the house that the guy you cheated on your husband with used to live in. And then your daughter comes back. You feel pretty haunted. But that's not even a really obvious implication of this movie. It's just a theory I came up with. The important thing is it's obvious she was cheating on her husband. And infidelity is the theme of this movie. Infidelity, guilt, sin, all that kind of crap. I actually never cheated on my wife. I may have killed her in a fake car accident. Or, I mean, I may have mourned her after she died in a car accident. And then I may or may not have killed several hookers. But I've actually never cheated on anybody in my life. Something that I actually don't think is a fun thing or a good thing to do. Shouldn't cheat on people. Just break up with them or kill them. I mean, uh, break up with them. Anyways, that's what this movie's really about. I don't know about the theory that the daughter is actually Frank's daughter. Eh, someone's probably suggested that at some point. Oh, we got some very sexy scenes. Starts sucking on his hand. This guy's got a hand fetish, I guess. Ooh, put your, put your grandma 1980s little, like, pajama thing on. No, fuck him, my 1980s Levi's. The vintage Japanese jeans, worth a lot in the 2020s. I love this. We cut to the actual husband, and he's like, he's, he's like fucking this mattress. He's like shoving it, trying to, trying to get it up the stairs. And she's remembering being shoved by his brother. Oh my God, he's got creep tattoos on his back. Oh, there's a nail. Like the nails that went into Christ's hand. And his hand's right next to it. Watch out. You're going to get cucked. Oh. Oh, bum sticking out. What a dirty girl. That's a nice rug on the wall. They got good taste in rugs, at least. Yeah, I might be in hell, but you can at least be in hell with some class. Oh, his blood hits the floor. Bad idea. Should have wrapped your hand up before you came into the haunted attic. So basically, her husband's got some, some kind of phobia of blood or something. Like, I can't look at my own blood. I'm a fucking pussy. What the hell's wrong with you, man? Everybody bleeds. That shit's right beneath your veins all the time. Gotta go to therapy and deal with that. If you'd done that already, you wouldn't have, you know, caused the plot of the film. Because now the creepy house is absorbing your blood. There it goes. Oh, it's drinking your milkshake into the nails. 
The iron from your blood is going into the iron nails. And we get one of the best effects sequences ever filmed, in my opinion. It's like a tiny heart beating under the floorboards. What the fuck? It's like Edgar Allan Poe's The Telltale Heart. It's a very quick but subtle reference to that. And I love it. Our characters just walk away. I love that the stained glass windows of this house have a big red droplet as their main feature. I'm sure it's just some old house that the filmmakers found. Pretty sure they didn't have the windows custom made for this. If they did, good for them. But if they didn't, that's even more impressive because it means, you know, it relates to the film's plot. It's just a nice detail, I noticed. Oh my god, the house has gas. They shouldn't have fed it Taco Bell. Oh, floorboards, the nails are popping out. What a great series of shots. They're so detailed. The rats are getting scared. There's like pus or or glue or some, some kind of weird fluid oozing up through the nail holes. It's like a dark resurrection. Oh, shit. Again, my opinion, this is one of the best special effects sequences in film history. Like, yeah, it's all done with goop and reverse photography, but just look at this. Doesn't this look real? That's because it is. They really used a necromancer to summon up a dead body from the house. Nah, but they just used, you know, props. Oh my god, the vascular system and the the blood veins crawling back onto the skull. And the brain is recreating itself. Holy shit. These rats are freaking out. They're like, we should probably get the fuck out of here. Oh my god. Every time I come up from hell to do a Plinkett review, I have to go through this. So I understand how it feels. That's why I love this movie so much. It's very accurate in its portrayal of resurrection. If Christ was real and got resurrected, he had to go through this. Keep that in mind. Oh my god. But they don't hear the screams of the resurrected zombie because they're too busy laughing. And notice that on the table, there's like a creepy, like, rib dish that's been picked clean. It looks just like a human, you know, skeleton ribs. Very creepy shit. Meanwhile, somehow her boyfriend's hiding, like, smoking a cigarette the whole time. I I don't know if you could do that effectively. Again, look at those creepy ribs. She's like, ah, I gotta go to bed. I definitely don't want to go up to the attic to to see if your brother's been resurrected. That's that's not what I'm doing. Man, that guy was sweating. What, do you have too many wines? Jesus. So many good character moments in this. Like her smiling awkwardly at her husband before she leaves. She's like, sorry to embarrass you. But I gotta see if your brother's been resurrected upstairs. Oh, she can hear the noises now. What could it be? It's me. I've come to visit you. Uh, uh, uh. Honestly, I've been to the Cenobite realm, spent a few, you know, millennia there. 
It was okay for a while, but eventually they kicked me out. They said, you know, they got tired of me being bored of every new torture they came up with. They were like, why the fuck are you even here? We can't even, like, torture you anymore. And I was like, you know, don't you have anything better? Come up with something else. And they were like, no, you gotta go back to Earth and review movies. And I was like, ah, oh, okay, I guess. I guess I'll do that, whatever. I do have to say, the Cenobites make some pretty good long pig. They're pretty good at doing that. Ah, oh, the heartbeat through the floorboards. She sees the rats eating some kind of puke-looking thing. Your daughter just got drunk and came up here and puked. Oh, or maybe not. Maybe it's something else. Oh, my God, this thing shuffling across the floor. Holy shit. This is so fucking good, man. Look at his fucking face. It's all hidden in the darkness. Don't look at this prop. It's better the less we show it. He's like, I need your help. I need you to watch the Star Wars prequels with me. I'm just kidding. That was me. He's like, no, it couldn't be you. Oh my God, his fucking face, his cheeks. You seeing your husband's weakness reminded you of his brother's virility psychologically and it brought me back in your own brain. That's what this is a metaphor for. But literally, he is back from the dead. That's just a psychological interpretation. Also, this chick just went out and smoked some weed or fucked someone or something. She's like adjusting her clothes. It's a very subtle detail. Obviously, she just went out and did something. She's like, oh, it's hard to walk with so much cum inside me. He's like, someone just got fucked. If she squirts her cum out on the floor, it'll revive me more. Make her do it. Make her do it, Julia. Quick, put me in the bathroom. If she goes to the bathroom, I can absorb it. It's like I'm a vampire. I need more blood. Oh my god. It's one of the most fucked up movies ever made. And it's so simple. One location, half a dozen characters or less. The lighting. She looks like Corella DeVille from the fucking Disney movie. He's like, I just came inside you. Did you, did you flush it out of you? You're not going to get pregnant, are you? You, you take birth control? She's like, yeah, yeah, I'm good. Don't worry about it. My mother's like, mm, what do I do? Oh, my God, the door closing on his zombie face. That's so fucking cool, man. It's like, Julia, to get into Hollywood, you have to sacrifice a child. Now she's got a Michael Jackson hat on. Could it be any more obvious? Sacrificing your children. Now we got this creepy hobo staring at them. He's like, I wanted to be in Hollywood, but it drove me insane. Yeah, your mother's not uptight at all with the pearl earrings and, you know, creepily being in the attic and staring at you. She's totally normal. And you're totally normal with the creepy Michael Jackson hat on. What, are you going to go grab a 10-year-old kid off the street after this? Jesus Christ. This movie's so tasteless. 
I can't make this shit up. It's terrible. Again, that's why this is one of the creepiest movies ever made. Now Julia's lying awake in bed and her husband's like hung over. He's got heartburn from drinking too much. He ate too many human ribs at the cannibal dinner that we saw earlier. She's remembering fucking Frank in front of a very nice looking rug hanging on the wall. Oh God, it's like he's trying to eat her face. Jesus. Why don't you just eat some of the rats? That's what the vampire guy did in Interview with the Vampire. You know, rats have blood in them. Oh my God, the fucking makeup in this. So fucking good. This looks real. Shouldn't have said yes. Should have burned the house down. That was your last chance. Oh my god. The moonlight on his fucking greasy, nasty face. And we cut to this shot. It's like... It's like she's walking into a pillow fight room. But the leaves or the, the feathers, they look like insects. Like she's going into some kind of rotting grave. All those feathers are actually flies buzzing around. Oh my god. You're having your period. Wake up. You need a new tampon. Brain's trying to tell you you gotta wake up and put a new tampon in. That's what this is. It's 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 like a period dream, right? Oh, maybe it's something worse. Quick, pulled the cloth off. Oh, God, it's a bad dummy. But we only saw it for a second, so it's okay. Shouldn't have fucked your girlfriend outside the party in a scene that we didn't see, but it was heavily implied. You're impregnated by a boyfriend. Shouldn't that premarital sex? Again, I don't know if that's a real thing in this movie or if other people have like theorized about it. It seems plausible. I mean, she left the party and came back all flustered. Her boyfriend was flirting with her during the scene where they were eating the human pig rib thing. That's yeah, pretty plausible they went outside and fucked against the side of the house. Just they couldn't show that in 1987. But they could show an incredibly gruesome, detailed, insane, horrifying resurrection. Because technically it's not real. It's just a bunch of goop that looks real. But my god. I wish Zoomers could be shown this en masse. They'd probably be so bored they'd fall asleep before the really gruesome scenes, but the ones that didn't, probably be traumatized for life. It'd be like showing people the movie Alien in 1979. They'd be puking in the theater and running out screaming. Ah, it'd be so fucking funny. Love to see that. Oh, he's looking at her through the wall. And then we cut to a bar with the guy who looks like the bartender from The Shining. There's a bunch of creepy American psycho guys. And they're like, ah, can we have casual sex? She's like, ah, no, I'm spoken for. I'm fucking a vampire zombie melted man that lives in my attic. And then she's like, wait a minute. My vampire zombie corpse boyfriend needs blood. Hmm, maybe I can lure this American psycho dandy guy with the pink pocket puff back to my house. And then she dies. This guy's like, Well, usually I fuck men, but your haircut is so masculine, I figured why not? I can pretend you're a dude. It's the 80s after all. He's like, no, I'm too fucking drunk. 
won't be able to get a boner. You know, I I should probably just fuck you, cause you know I'm I'm. That's kind of why you brought me here. So you know, let's do it. And he's like, I feel like your corpse, creepy boyfriend's hypnosis powers have been transferred through you and and into me, and I feel like I I know you. And she's like, ah. Uh, God. I love these close-ups where their faces are in shadow. It's just like the corpse in the attic. What makes this movie creepy in part is that the living characters on the screen are lit in the same way the corpse is. So when you're watching these real actors doing these scenes with minimal makeup, they start to remind you of the corpse in the attic. This whole movie creepifies mortality and infidelity and all sorts of things that are common and, you know, real. Makes you see them in a different light. Just like we just saw these two making out in the, in the entrance way. Their faces were lit in such a way that exposed the contours of their bones, shadows under their eyes, and made them look like corpses. It's like we're all walking corpses, animated only by consciousness, which is an illusion. It's like we're all just undead wandering around, trying to make the best of it. So it makes these movies so haunting. They have a subtext that exposes how creepy it is to be mortal, to know that you're going to die one day. In a sense, we're all just corpses waiting to rot to the point where we fall apart. I know I've been waiting for that for a while. I'm 112. I've thought I was going to die like six times in the past. I don't even think about it anymore. Figure it'll happen or it won't. Whatever. Oh, these actors are so good, man. Her lips twitch when she responds to him. There's these little facial motions that really betray their characters, their emotions. And just as he says, she's beautiful. The zombie's like, hmm, those ass cheeks are beautiful. And he's like, ah, oh, shit. You're like, I gotta piss, or I'm gonna piss inside you. She's like, I can't wait for that. I'm gonna smash it. Oh my god. I guess she didn't have any raid. She had to use the hammer. God, smashed his fucking teeth out. That's brutal, man. Ah, damn. What a woman. He's like, don't watch me while I feed. But we get to watch because we're viewers. Oh my god, that little costume. Holy shit, that's scary. It's like a little gray rotting alien or something. And she's like, well, I should probably wash my blouse. I think I got some spaghetti sauce on it when I was at the bar. I had the bolognese. Hey, mamma mia, with the extra meatball. Oh, these close-ups are so psychotic. Speaking of psychotic... There's a lot of shots in this that really are reminiscent to some of the oldest horror films, like even Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. There's like this creepy old house, you got these themes of, you know, very human, average kind of sins and follies, like infidelity. You got everyday spaces like attics and bathrooms that are totally reframed as like hellish horror zones. And you got like violin music and close-ups of women wearing sort of classical looking clothing. 
Oh my god. These fucking costumes, man. Somehow his vocal cords were, you know, formed enough that even when he was a rotting skeleton, he could talk to her like this, and, and his his voice hasn't changed, but just just ignore that, kids. It's part of the film. He's like, come touch my greasy non-skin. Oh my god. Look at the veins in his face. God, I wish horror movies were still this good. If anyone has anything this creepy you can recommend to me, post it in the comments. Although I doubt you're going to be able to top this. I've seen The Thing. I've seen uh, all the Brian Usner movies. And, uh, yeah, I doubt there's anything better than that. Oh, my God, she picks him up like he's like a Halloween dummy or something. Ah. Jesus Christ. You'd think you'd be able to smell the blood just from, like, coming up the stairs. It would, like, reek of iron. I know that from trying to dispose of a hooker. Smell of iron and blood doesn't go away for, like, a day or two. I guess if they're all smoking, they probably have no sense to smell left over. I love how she does like a Freddy, you know, he does like a Freddy Krueger thing. She's like, uh, I'm, I'm feeling sick. It's, it's my period. That explains the overwhelming smell of blood. I need a drink for the cramps. Not what she says, but it's actually a better explanation than she provides in the story. Our lipstick is smeared, but is it lipstick or blood? We don't know. Again, very creepy scene. So many subtle things in this movie. Her earrings are little satanic stars pointing down. Frank's hiding in the shadows like Michael Myers, and then he grabs her. He's like, uh, it kind of hurts not, like, to have skin. He's like, if you want my dick to work, I need you to kill two more people. Tell me back to normal. What makes this movie so creepy, too, is it's like a dark resurrection of Christ. Kind of implies that Christ may not have been a good guy. You know, he, he died violently and he was tortured and he was resurrected. But a bunch of his followers died in between. Maybe he was only resurrected because he, like, absorbed their blood or something because he was some kind of vampire. I don't know anything about that, though, guys. I'm not really a religious person. My religion is the religion of film. A very diverse, all-inclusive, and morally flexible religion. But this movie is one of its darkest productions, I'm not gonna lie. Ah, a kid knocking on the cage with the snake. That's great. Again, religious themes. Oh shit, guys, it's the same homeless man. What's he doing here? He's just creepily staring at you. He's like, I'm just having a snack. Don't worry about it. I eat bugs because they got protein. It's like, it's no different than eating crabs or shrimp or crawdads or lobster. These are just ones that live on land. You guys eat them from the ocean all the time, right? He's like, okay, I'll leave, but 
Oh, you guys being fucking hypocrites. I love your arms across like an old school teacher. <laughs> but wait, is this beggar Zeus in disguise? Why is he standing in the light? The guy who's being resurrected is a creepy zombie. The beggar on the street who looks like a hobo might actually be the good guy who's trying to warn you. All the birds around him like doves, symbols of peace. Now she's got some other balding asshole that she's invited over. Why would you think you'd be interrupted? This is like a giant empty house. Oh yeah, you're being real careful. You're fucking dead, you moron. Enjoy being vampire food. Yum, yum, yum. Oh, she's wiping her hands off with a fucking handkerchief. Why would you even waste your handkerchief? Why don't you just wash your hands? I guess you don't want to touch the doorknob. That's why I always liked Raid. Because it just kind of like puts the hookers into rigor mortis. And you can chop the bodies up wherever you want. But they don't bleed everywhere. Blood is so goddamn messy, man. That's why these movies are so... Oh, oh. Let's rubber band back to things, guys. She just smiled. She's starting to enjoy it. She's become a true disciple of Vampire Zombie Christ. A.K.A. this guy. Why would you even give him a shirt when he doesn't have skin? Also, cigarettes don't have much of a taste. They, they mostly just taste like ashes and, and like heavy metals and burnt shit. If you want to taste something, you got to smoke pipe tobacco or a cigar. That's the real shit. And he's like, don't touch the cube of Saturn or the black, the black Hajj cube. You're a fifth dimensional being and you touch this thing, you come back down here to Earth, which is basically a giant Middle Earth, pseudo hell kind of creepy flesh realm. Oh my God. Who are these kids that keep trying to go fishing and get their hooks stuck in, in our main character eye? There's not even any bodies of water here. What you doing fishing here? The fuck is wrong with you? Go to the ocean. There's a lot more fish there. It's like... This cube is Minecraft. It's very addictive. Don't start playing unless you feel like playing for a long time. Um, how do you know that? How do you know that the, the Cenobites won't find you? They're not of this world, so, like, it doesn't matter how you try to hide from them? She's like, ever since I started murdering people, I don't mind watching boxing. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, this guy loves boxing, but he doesn't like the sight of blood. That don't make sense. Boxing matches end in bloody events all the time. There's always people bleeding from the mouth or cheeks or eyes. They didn't used to censor that back in 1987. That don't make sense. This guy wouldn't be a boxing fan. He'd be watching football or something. It's almost like that scene was just put in there to serve the narrative. Ah, that's okay. This movie has its flaws, guys. It's not perfect. But it's still really good. Ah, and remember, 
Her old creepy vampire boyfriend zombie guy needs one more sacrifice. Who's it gonna be? He's like, I really should check out that massive noise that sounded like a person wandering around right above our heads. I mean, you can't blame him. He'd be kind of an idiot if he didn't want to check it out. The fuck is that, like, banister statue? Is it some kind of gargoyle demon thing? What's that supposed to be? I can't even see. Is, is it like a cat? Looks like the fucking H.P. Lovecraft Cthulhu statue sitting right on the banister there. The fuck would you have that? It's horrifying. He's like, oh, it's just the schizo newspaper clippings that my brother pasted on the window. It's just that and some crucified rats. It's no big deal. Let's go downstairs and fuck. Mm. It's like, no, keep it dark, because you've been getting old, and I, I want to fantasize that you're like a younger woman or, or even a guy. So just, just, t- just keep the light off. It's okay. Also, let's keep our clothes on for the purposes of the film. I'll keep my lumberjack shirt on. You keep your 1980s giant shoulder pads thing on your, your, you know, your blouse or whatever. Oh, God, you got a creepy photo staring at you. I might just harsh the mellow in the whole sex room. Also, the bloody vampire guy in the closet might also, you know, might fuck with things. She's like, uh, I really don't want you to kill your own brother who's also my husband just so that you can come back to life. That's a bit much for me. She's like, I know I killed two totally unknown guys, but, uh, you know, killing random people is one thing. Killing families another. He's like, okay, I'll wait a little longer, but not forever. Meanwhile, her husband's like, what the fuck's wrong with you? You invite me to bed, you made out for me for like five minutes. We, we we got right down here, and then all of a sudden you're like, no. You don't you don't give any explanation. You don't even give an excuse like I got cramps, I got a headache, I feel sick. You just you just say no. Man, at least give the guy some context. I'm not saying he should have just forced himself on you. Just you know, he's justified in being confused. And then, very creepily and awkwardly, we cut to him having tea with his daughter in a Chinese restaurant. And he's complaining about his wife to his own daughter. That's a bit weird, dude. What, do you think your daughter's going to give you some insight on your wife when she hasn't lived with you for years? It's just creepy, man. You got the red dragon of Revelation screaming into the frame on both shots of both characters. Oh, man. It's a creepy scene. He's like, would you replace my wife? She's like, uh, no. But, uh, you know, I could, I could, I could talk, I could talk to her. God, this guy's fucking outfit is so goddamn well done in this. Just look at those makeup effects. It really looks like a guy whose skin was ripped off. He's fucking dripping. His little fibers on his muscles are visible. It's just ridiculous how detailed and good it is. There's no CGI that can match that. 
just looks like a plastic video game. It's just no one's willing to put the effort into doing this type of thing. Your actors need four hours to get the makeup on. You got to do multiple shots. You got to wear goop all over the place, drips all over the set. Ah, it's just a lost art of film. She's like, you won't be lonely when you're eaten alive by my vampire zombie Jesus boyfriend. She's going to really appreciate your sacrifice. God, look at the glistening in the darkness. One of the best things about this movie is how expertly well the lighting is done. In the exterior and interior scenes, it's all just done so masterfully. He's like, yep, that's me. And then she uses a killing hammer on him. Oh, shit, be skulling. He's like, I am. Here I am. Why are you calling my name? I'm right here. Time to pray to me, meaning be my prey. Here he goes. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, sorry, I'm saying it too now. He's already there. I don't have to say it. Sounds like me when I'm eating a Gordita Crunch from Taco Bell. I certainly feel closer to God when I eat Taco Bell. Must be something holy about that restaurant. And can nobody hear anybody at the top of the stairs when they're at the bottom of the stairs in this house? Do they not creak at all? Those floorboards must have been done by professionals and like oiled and I don't know, they, they, they don't make any sound. This must be a well-built house, that's all I'm saying. Oh, I think it's a dragon at the top of the banister there. He's like, I've had a bit too much to drink. Can I have some water, please? Oh, I shouldn't have touched him. He's like, he's like, it's fine, it's your Uncle Frankie, your real father. He's like, I'm a bloody corpse with no skin. There's nothing you could possibly do to me. Oh, Jesus Christ, Sylvia Plath would have an aneurysm watching this. She wrote a poem called Daddy, and I feel like it was a direct reaction to this scene. Again, the guy's got no skin. Good job just, like, busting into his nasty, rotting corpse body. Oh, shouldn't have touched the cube. Don't log into Minecraft, it's addictive. You'll never log out if you get in there. He's like, that's my Minecraft server, don't log in. That's my admin account. No, my Minecraft account, what have you done? Oh, I shouldn't have picked it up again. 
Should have gone to a steel smelting plant and thrown it into a, to a vat of molten metal or something. Now she's wandering the street like a traumatized meth addict and the nuns are like, this chick's been playing too much Minecraft. She's, she hasn't slept in days. Just leave her alone. She's like, oh my god, my monster energy wore off. Now these random people are gonna have to revive me. Ah, oh, let me get this rose opening. This nurse is straight up just watching like slow motion flower videos. What is she brain dead? She's like, don't worry, you're definitely not in hell. Just give the cube to the police. I'd love to see some cop deal with the cube. No, don't leave it with her. Oh my God. It's like you're clearly autistic. How about we leave you with the Rubik's cube so it can solve her? Don't touch it. It's got a vaguely swastika-esque four-pronged symbol on it that looks like the Big Dipper rotated during the four seasons of harvest. That's obviously totally evil. Everything about living in a healthy way with nature and obeying the cycle of the seasons, that's obviously evil. We should obviously not do that. That's why the, that's why the swastika is obviously evil. And also every symbol that it was derived from is clearly evil. We should obviously not live according to the cycle of the seasons. We should obviously oppose it. Because I'm sure that'll lead to like a better society. That's what this film is saying to me. Oh shit, you got shocked by the blue lightning. Is it Thor? What could be happening? Oh no. Satan's butthole is opening. Oh, it hasn't opened in a long time. There's some cobwebs in there. God, this movie's so fucking cool. This scene kind of reminds me of the movie Labyrinth. At this misty stone passage. Dare she enter? Abandon all hope, you enter the Hellraiser hallway. It's probably not a good idea. Oh, as soon as she takes one step, there's a baby crying. And remember, after she fucked her boyfriend, she had that creepy nightmare where there was a baby crying. Now she's walking through the hallway of her own vagina. What will she find within? Only time will tell. Can't even remember if her boyfriend even comes back into the story. Oh. Maybe you have a bug in your vagina? 
Oh my god. Jesus Christ, look at this thing's eyes. Holy shit. You totally can't see the dolly track that is pushing the monster. Ignore that. You can't see it. It's a real thing. Ignore the obvious wheels and, and dolly track that you can see behind this thing. That's not real. That's a creepy monster. Just enjoy the visuals. Just enjoy it. Oh, that's actually a good shot. Oh my god, the hallway's infinite. The vagina's too deep. Can't escape it. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. That yeah, turns out to just insane. Stop touching the fucking cube. Maybe just throw it out the window and be done with it. Oh, she just has to keep fucking with it. Oh, shit. Oh, she's in the sauna now. She's getting all sweaty. Mm, her rose is opening. Oh, someone someone fucked up with the with the IV bag, I guess. You're not supposed to put baking soda and vinegar in the IV bags. They tend to, you know, erupt when you do that. And this guy's like, this is your monthly reminder to get a dental cleaning. I will now examine your teeth for cavities. You have a cavity. Please allow the dentists to remove it. So like you came down, you came down to the three dimensional realm with linear time from somewhere else. This is a realm of flesh. Now you're trapped here, bitch. Now you're ours. Ha, ha, ha. You came down here from the machine elf realm into whatever the fuck this reality is because you solved a puzzle. This is your reward. Enjoy being here till you're dead. Okay, right, you're not the first bitch. Of course, there's been other people. And this bitch is like Judas. She's like, this Jesus guy escaped you. So, uh, do you want do you want to have him instead? Cause I don't want to go to like hell. And also, he's a creepy fuck. Oh my god. I thought they're just sitting here smoking instead of like fleeing the state. Like why would you not just leave immediately? Wrap this guy in bandages, pretend he's a burn victim and get the fuck out. You could just grab a random hobo off the street and drag him into the house and fix this guy so he looks normal and then get the fuck out. Why are they even standing around here smoking for like two days? I mean, it's implied that the girl's been gone for a while, right? Where's this guy been the whole fucking time? Now that's ever explained. What, was he on a business trip? Was that ever explained? 
Okay, there's a bit of a hole in the plot here, guys. I can't ignore that. Oh, finally your boyfriend decides to show up like a day and a half after she disappeared. Good for you, buddy. I guess if none of them knew, but still. You'd think the hospital would have, like, called them. I guess if she didn't have ID on her, maybe she didn't. I don't know. Again, I'm not necessarily made, you know, upset by this type of shit. Just questions I have to ask when I watch these things. Oh, she's got a black pearl necklace. That's not evil at all. Oh no. You're forsaking your daughter for your creepy relationship. Of course, your father is actually your dad uncle. Surprise, but you didn't expect that. And I mean that in more ways than one. Rafa's face looks like it was stitched on. So fucking creepy, man. She's like a solved the creepy Rubik's cube. Mm, unspeakable indeed. That's a hell of an excuse. What the fuck did you do with this body? I'm sure I look totally normal to you with my obviously puffy, inflamed, nasty, disgusting pizza outline. You know, where my, my face was like glued on. You shouldn't believe it. It's obvious it's a lie. Well, I love why he doesn't say anything. Just looks at her. So fucking creepy, man. This movie is so well done. He just checks his eyeball. Oh, is the Egyptian worm still in there? Yeah, okay. All right, we're good. How exactly would you explain killing someone that would reduce them to some something like that? What, did he use acid on the guy? I guess the explanation doesn't matter because they're just going to drop her in there, but still. Uh-oh, it's the Hellraiser, people. Oh, 
Well, it looks like locking the door didn't do much. She just fucking opened it. I don't even explain that. He's like, I'm definitely not Frank. I'm totally, I'm totally his brother. Just look at my face. Would this face lie to you? You know, if I was his daughter, I would have only been asking this, this guy one question ever since I saw him. What's wrong with your shirt? You got blood on your collar. Obviously something's happened to you. Doesn't make sense. Well, now she's finally starting to realize, guys, she's realizing something's not right. Should have asked about the shirt, just like I said. Oh, God. Where well, he grabs the face. Wow. She's, she's like, you know my secret. My cheeks are made of strawberry jam. And also, I really like switchblades. Oh. Get it? Like the crucified rats in the attic? I think that's what he's making reference to, guys. I think that's what this all ties back to. The rats in the attic. Oh, my God. This guy really doesn't give a shit. It's just whoever he can get his hands on. What an asshole. He's like, I made your face turn gray and be covered in skin flakes. And uh, I look no different from absorbing your, your energy. Wouldn't his face at least not look like shit? And have, like, the pizza outline on it? Wouldn't his cheek be healed? He just absorbed her entire life force, and he isn't different. Zero out of ten. This movie sucks. No continuity. I found a mistake. Please give me the award for number one critic for finding that mistake. Oh, he touches the dragon banister. I think he might have been the first character to do that. It's kind of an interesting detail because we've had the same shot of all these characters. Ah, uh -huh, Jesus jumps out. Get it? Because he's like a zombie sacrificial figure. And we're supposed to think that he's holy, but he's actually creepy as fuck if you have half a brain and understand the implications of that religious narrative. It's it's like a weird necro cannibalistic cult religion, like most religions are. But that one, you know, it, it kind of comes across creepy if, if you look at it with with your brain switched on. Anyway, She's hiding from him. Don't make any noise. Oh, shit. He's like, oh, it's just my buddy Maggot Barf. And he comes over for drinks every now and then. He's got this condition. He ate some really fancy French cheese that has maggot eggs in it. And, you know, it turns out they just live in his guts now, so he pukes maggots now and then. But he's a nice guy. I had him over and he had a few too many to drink. So I'm sorry if he vomits maggots on you. He doesn't mean any harm, though. Just make sure you wash those maggots off, because, you know, his condition's contagious. Yeah, that is one creepy fucking statue that she's... Currently sitting right next to it's like a dog, dragon, demon, Cthulhu statue. Maybe don't get too close to that thing. 
Uh oh. Again, these floorboards are perfect. Oh, Jesus Christ, the scene. It's like something from Halloween. It's so basic, but so scary. It's the performances that make it. Yeah, everything seems great. Uh-oh, you just admitted that you were here. What was this guy smoking, thinking that interdimensional hell demons wouldn't be able to figure out he'd reincarnated? Like, what? What? how did he think he was going to hide? By just looking different? As if that would fool these things. I mean, yeah, they had to find him through his daughter, or his stepdaughter, or his niece, or whatever. But, but even if she hadn't exposed him, you'd think they would have just found him. That's never explained in the lore. Like, yeah, oh, you look different, but you'd think these things would be able to see past your flesh. Probably be able to figure out who you are, regardless. Especially that fat guy. He's got the uh, goggles on, you know, he can really see. Oh, shit. It's like, well, you set me up, man. What the fuck did you expect me to do? You killed my fucking mother and you tried to kill me? There's those kids with the fish hooks again. Too bad, you fucked. Mel Gibson, eat your heart out. This is much gorier than Passion of the Christ. It predates that movie by like 15 years. Get fucked. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, God, right up his spine. Oof, that's kind of smart. Oh, and then we get the famous line. A lot of people don't understand what that line means. What it's referring to is that while Jesus was getting whipped, tortured, and killed on the cross, he cried. But he didn't cry for humanity's sins or out of sympathy. He cried because he was in pain. He selfishly reacted to his own suffering because he was human. He had a human nervous system and he was in pain. And those tears were not tears for you or tears for anybody else. They were just tears of his own selfish, personal, human, mortal suffering. That's what makes that quote so creepy, but people don't explain it. They just go, oh, it's creepy because he said Jesus. It's not why it's creepy. It's creepy because it draws attention to the mortality of that figure in history. And that in every fantasy narrative about his dying for our sins, it's always portrayed that his tears mean something like, you know, he was crying for us. He was crying for, you know, the people he was trying to die for. But he wasn't. Those tears would have been a reaction of his body enduring stress and having to cry. It would have been an involuntary reaction to his own personal suffering. So, it more, you know, it makes him more mortal. Makes it creepy. All right, so like a true autistic hero, she solves the Rubik's Cube guys and banishes the demons. She made all the sides the same color. All the red cubes are on the red side, and the blue cubes are on the blue side, 
and the green cubes are on the green side, and so on. So then the demons are gone, because all the colors line up. Good for you, you solved the Rubik's Cube. You get a gold star, you filled out the coloring sheet for the week. You did your autism ABCs, and you got a gold star. That's the moral of the story, guys. To solve your Rubik's Cubes, you'll be fine. Oh my god, what is this, a Power Ranger or something? Oh god, she shirked a dentist appointment. Oh my god, turns out you didn't have any cavities because you've been brushing your teeth. Watch out for the fat guy though, he's got no eyes. Oh my god! Ah, oh, it's okay, the House of Usher collapsed on him. Boyfriend's like, well, I was totally insane and fucked up, but you're really sexy and you let me fuck you while your parents were eating a human corpse during the dinner scene. Don't go out there, the cube's not solved. Oh my god. Making a weird Star of David shape. You gotta solve that before you can you can be let go. Oh shit! Milk bottles aren't gonna help you against against this thing. That's a genuine Clive Barker creation. You're gonna need to do a little more than than like throw a milk bottle at her. Oh come on! Gotta use your autism powers to solve the puzzle. Come on, you can do it. I believe in you. Come on. Okay, here you go. She's like, no, don't fucking solve this for me. Ah, get back in the cube, you freak. Back to the atmosphere of Saturn where you belong. Ooh, there he goes, flying away. She's like, okay, are, are we good? Something else gonna try to fuck with me? Are we, are we okay? Her boyfriend's like, yeah, I'm gonna break up with you after this. I don't think I can, I can deal with this trauma. It's funny, I always kind of got the Zoomer haircut almost. Eh, everything comes full circle in the end. It's okay, let the fake rain from the fire hydrants or the fire truck sprayers wash off. My ugly 80s shirt will protect you. And the house is conveniently burning itself down in a cliche haunted house kind of ending scene. But we didn't want to actually burn down the house, so we just like overlaid a picture of of the guy burning and then we cut to like a bunch of burning rubble that looks nothing like the spot where the house was. It's okay guys, there's a burning chair there. That means this is totally the house. Either that or I guess they drove to like some other part of town. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be the ruins of the house. Even though again, it looks nothing like that, but whatever. Again, this movie's very low budget. You gotta give it a break. You gotta give it more of a break than I am. Oh shit, guys, it's the homeless man. Is he good? Is he evil? Is he some neutral force of balance in the cosmos? We don't know. Seems to think the cube needs to be saved one way or the other. Okay, no, this guy's this guy's pretty clearly evil. 
Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb, guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna say he's he's probably evil. Oh, but it's all recorded in the black cube of reality. The interdimensional subspace server located on the North Pole of Saturn. You too can have access to it. And the movie goes all the way back to the beginning. Oh my God. Wasn't that a fun ride, guys? These old movies, these old horror movies, they're a lot like the spooky Disneyland rides, like the Haunted Mansion. Oftentimes, it seems like you end up right where you started off. You know, because the movie tends to empty the the riders out right near the entrance, because it makes sense to, to make the ride into like a circle or like a U-shape. Anyways, wasn't that a fun ride? Again, I dare you to recommend me a movie better than this in terms of special effects. If you can, put it in the comments. And again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed my comments. And uh, keep your ears out for more. Get your totally legal, not torrented versions of your favorite movies lined up. Because you never know. I might just review one that's been waiting on your hard drive for a rewatch. Until then, fellow Hellraisers, blink it out.